His parents were Stefan Orison and Segria Orinsdotti, who emigrated in 1887, on board SS Communes from Reykjavik, with their son John, then three years old, born in 1883, bound for Winnipeg. When Stefan, who changed his name upon arrival, and his little family came to Winnipeg he had $10 in his pocket and a rudimentary understanding of English. In Winnipeg the couple had three more sons, Joseph, Carl Gustav and Stephen Helgi, who later joined the Canadian army and was immediately sent overseas to the battlefields in France. Two weeks later his brother Joe enlisted as a lieutenant in the 223rd Battalion, composed mostly of Icelanders, and was shipped off as well. When their mother did not cry at all at Joe's departure, in contrast to her excessive weeping at Steve's, Joe confronted her about her apparent favoritism. But Joe, she is rapid to have said, you are coming back. On September 16, Stephen Thorson died from wounds he got in the Battle of Somma. His final words were, give my regards to my brother, Charlie. Carl Gustav, or Charlie as he was called, not only by his family, showed early his artistical skills and his first known cartoon appeared on March 4, 1909 on the front page of the local Icelandic newspaper Heimskringla. The main character in the drawing is Friedrich Svensson, also known as Fred Swanson, who emigrated in 1873 as foster son of Olafur Olafsson from Espihol it's believed that Fred Swanson, a Winnipeg house painter, designer of stained glass windows and sign painter, became Charlie's artistic mentor. But the common interest in art was not the only reason that drew Charlie to Fred Swanson's home. Fred had beautiful daughters and the youngest one, Ranveig or Ranka captured Charlie's heart, and the 11th of October 1914 they exchanged vows in Ranka's parents' home in Gimli. Two months earlier their son Carl, or Charlie as he was called, was born. The happiness didn't last for long, Ranka died the 19th of October 1916 from TB and the following year the son Charlie died two years old from diphtheria. The following years his life was in turmoil but eventually became more settled and there was soon a new woman in his life. Her name was Ada Albina Teslok, a Polish country girl, one of nine sisters, from Brokenhead in Manitoba. Like many of the women in Charlie's life, she was both beautiful and spirited. With her jet black hair and eyes, her snow white complexion, and her slender figure, she was said to be so striking that men would stop dead in their tracks and stare at her. Anyway, in spite of this beauty, or maybe because of it. And the son Stephen, this marriage did in tea last and once again Charlie spent his unhappy days in cafes drinking and drawing sketches. His favorite place was the Wevel Cafe near the corner of Sargent Avenue and Victor Street, Winnipeg and Charlie was one of its best customer. When Charlie was there, the stories would flow and laughter would fill the boots. And if children were passing by and caught a glimpse of Charlie, they would convince their parents to come in and Charlie would not only tell stories, he would illustrate the children on napkins and plate maps or even the menus. It was there Charlie met a beautiful waitress who had recently come to Manitoba directly from Iceland to visit her relatives in Manitoba and to see the world. Her name was Kristen Solvadotti. Between sketches and stories at the Wevel Café, and probably with his sketches and stories, Charlie would flirt openly with Kristen. He always had an eye for beauty, and she also shared his sense of adventure. Because Charlie was twice her age and a notorious ladies' man, Kristen was outwardly cool to him. But Charlie sketched a love note to Kristen and wrote enigmatically. All this will be yours if you will have me, and drew himself as a tiny prince, bowing grandly to his shy princess Kristen. Kristen was overwhelmed by this all. She fled to Winnipeg for Niagara Falls to sort out her feelings. They corresponded but what they said will never be known. Charlie left Winnipeg for Los Angeles and Walt Disney. He would never see Kristen again and she went back to Iceland. According to his friends and family he would immortalize her later in one of the world's most famous animated movies. What does that mean? Kristen Solvadotti was she the inspiration for Snow White and she was Icelandic.